Hey everybody, it's your broker Jason coming to you from cyberspace, I guess, as I'm traveling today and not able to make the company meeting. But I uh, wanted to go over a few things with you um, on this wonderful mid-March week where we are all just yearning for a little more spring weather. So hang in there. It's coming. We know the market's heating up. Um, interest rates just dropped this week. I don't know if you've talked to your friendly lender this week, but there was a little bank failure out in California that um, made rates come down a fair amount. Uh, so if you have buyers, not a bad time to get them under contract, get them pre-approved, um, get in touch with your lenders on what they can do for you for a rate. So in the meantime, I'm going to share my screen here. So bear with me for half a second. And we're going to take a quick look at this. I've got from our Michigan Realtors, uh, this came from Grar this week, about agency concepts. Now, as you all know, we are a designated agency company. We have um, the ability to uh, represent buyers or sellers, basic uh, agency relationship 101 stuff here. But here's, um, and you want to go back and reread this, I'll send it out on a company email as well, um, along with this video, but I uh, wanted you to understand a few things about agency and why buyer agency is so unique um, for our company and um, for us in Michigan in general. So they have included about 12 points of light here. Salesperson broker can create an agency relationship through words and actions, even in the absence of a written contract. So implied buyer agency is a thing. If you are acting as a buyer's agent, um, you have the responsibilities of a buyer's agent. Now we've always said, hey, until I have a buyer agency contract signed legally, I'm representing the seller. There is some truth to that. But uh, if you're indicating you're a buyer's agent without a contract, it can be determined that you are acting as, as a buyer's agent. So um, just be careful with that. Always better to get it in writing. Um, in a traditional agency firm, there's imputed knowledge, whereas a matter of law, each agent is deemed to know what every other agent in the firm knows. Um, now, we are a designated agency company, so we don't know. Like Kevin Allen has a listing in Granville. Um, Jessica Tucker has no responsibility to know anything about that or disclose anything about it unless she has specific knowledge. Um, you can only practice designate agency if you have a written agreement that expressly provides for designate agency. So our buyer agency contract has that and you should be disclosing in your agency disclosure form that we are acting as designated agency company. So a couple check boxes to remember there. It is often stated that an agent owes their client the fiduciary duty of loyalty, obedience, disclosure, confidentiality, due care, and accounting. Case law that has developed is over what specific responsibilities those duty cover. So um, in a dual agency situation, if you do not have the informed consent of both parties, you forfeit your right to a commission. Interesting. So if you do have a buyer under buyer agency contract and you sell your listing, that constitutes dual agency. And in order to get paid, you have to have that dual agency addendum signed where both parties consent to dual representation. Now, again, consider the scenario, Kevin Allen's listing, Jessica Tucker's buyer, not dual agency. Um, now, you can also act in the on the behalf of a customer. So if somebody walks into your open house or calls on the sign and they want to write an offer, you're not necessarily going to drag them into dual agency. You can just indicate you are representing the seller on the agency disclosure statement, sign it, have them sign it as a potential buyer. Now you, they are just a customer and you can write the offer on their behalf representing the seller. Sorry, I've got pop-ups going here. So you can work with them. That's number seven. Number six is the role of a dual agent is not that of a mediator. The role is simply to facilitate the transaction. So if you're a dual agent, you can't disclose confidential information. You cannot indicate what the seller is willing to accept. And so you have to facilitate what the buyer wants and get the transaction completed. We went over number seven. Number eight, never attempt a dual agency role or transaction coordinator role when you have a special connection with one side or the other. So if you, if it's grandma's house and cousin 
Lou wants to buy it, that really muddies the water. But if it's grandma's house and the neighbor down the street wants to buy it, you probably uh, have a relationship with grandma better than the one with the neighbor down the street. And so it's hard to represent both parties equally. Um, a client can always terminate an agency relationship. Termination may constitute a breach of contract. So the buyer or the seller owes damages, but that doesn't mean the agency relationship continues. Uh, so we know how to terminate the an addendum on either a listing early expiration or on the buyer contract. Delivery of a document, offer acceptance and notice. So this is important when it comes to timing on, on de offer deadlines, responses before rescission um, with a competing offer coming in. Delivery of a document, offer acceptance, notice, et cetera, to the listing agent is the same as delivery to the seller. So delivery to a cooperating agent is the same as delivery to the buyer only if the buyer is the cooperating buyer's agent. So what that means is if you do not have a buyer agency contract in place and a seller sends you a counter offer, it's not delivered until the buyer actually sees it. So make sure you have those buyer agency contracts in place in this type of environment. Very important to know. Representation of two buyers interested in the same house is not a dual agency situation. Now we address this in our buyer agency contract, so I think we're covered there, but it's good to know that you can show uh, two buyers and write on their behalf as long as it's disclosed and you don't disclose confidential information. And in a traditional agency firm, you need to get a dual agency agreement signed whenever there's in-house deal. Uh, we are designated agency, so you do not it's only when you have your buyers under buyer agency contract and you sell your own listing under a listing contract. So keep that in mind. It's not dual agency if, uh, if it's anybody else in-house that you're writing that offer on. So um, hopefully that clears up some misconceptions or unknown facts about agency. If you have any other questions on this, feel free to shoot me an email or a text or stop by and see me when I'm back in the office next week on Tuesday morning. Thanks, everybody, and have a great weekend. Stay safe on St. Patty's Day, and go green.